Hi guys. I hope you're you're doing well today. Um I'm doing well but with a heavy heart. I don't know if most of you know, but uh the Christian community lost one of its soldiers this week. Singer Mandisa. She died. She was one of my favorite singers. And I'm still I'm rejoicing for her, but mourning for the world. But nevertheless, I'm still going to preach a sermon um, called The Gift of Honesty. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for, for life, and I thank you for what you've done for us and what you're about to do for us in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, speak to me, speak through me, speak to every heart, every mind, every spirit, and say something different to all of us at the same time. Lord God, as you do, you speak to it individually. You're, you're a relational God. You want more than anything from from the garden to the end. You want to have relationship with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. And although we don't understand why things happen, why people depart from us, we know that you are our God and you are sovereign, and and you you know you know us. You love us. You take care of us. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Speak to me. Speak through me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Okay, guys. Um, I was watching a movie. Um, a Hallmark movie called um, Blind Date Book Club. And basically, it's about this woman who owns a a bookstore. She got the bookstore. She inherited the bookstore from her mother. And her mother um, is, was a a real lover of books and now she inherited the bookstore but the books um but she partners with her aunt in this bookstore so and this bookstore has a book club but the special thing about this book club is it's an anonymous book club. And what the prop- prop- proprietor does, every week she wraps up books and puts special sayings on them, like a book full of adventure. And she wraps the books up and then... And then... Then they come. Then they come back the next week and discuss the book they read. So it's actually a blind book. Um, and if you if you like the book or even hate the book, um, you can come back the next week and discuss it. Um, and what happens to her was she inherited this this book club this uh bookstore from her aunt and now her her aunt shares um part of the business but now her aunt comes to see her she runs the day to day of the bookstore but now her her aunt who is a partner in the bookstore, wants to uh, be bought out. She wants to travel and do 
certain things. So, so right now she, this lady has to make the decision. Do I let go of the bookstore or do I sell the, do I sell the bookstore or do I try and keep it up on my own? And anyone who's tried to run a business or run the business knows how hard it is um, to run a business. And then the main plot is there is this um, huge um, um, Hollywood-like author who does all this young all these young adult books under his real name. But secretly, he's trying to do another book, which is not young adult, under a whole other name. But um, the, the problem is the book is bad. The book is bad. And the other problem is, under his own name, his agent is saying, we need another book in this series. Because um, under his own name, under his uh, Hollywood popular name, he has this young adult series that people absolutely love. It's a bestseller, and people absolutely love this series. But he wants to branch out and not be so pigeonholed. And I can tell you, as an author, when when you're kind of pigeonholed and people are expecting a certain thing from you, when you branch out, sometimes people don't like it. So that's why he decided to write this other book under a pseudonym so he could get a new start in a new genre. But the problem is the book is bad. It's 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 really not written well. The plot's not written well. And it was basically written to be written, not written to affect the world and not written for fun or whatever. Basically, it was written because he thought that kind of um, fiction would be would be um, would be more popular. But it was really it's really bad. So this proprietor. And this author, uh, they meet, and um, she reads his book because he gives her. He hears about her on the on the radio, and then he gives her this book to read, and she like she really hates it. She reads it and really doesn't like it. But instead of saying that she just doesn't like it, she gives really honest and helpful critiques. Um, Because sometimes when you're a big star, people don't tell you the truth. You have a bunch of yes people around you. You have a bunch of... Yes, people around you, and nobody tells you no. Because sometimes with power and influence comes the fear of people to tell you the truth. Um, And everybody around him was telling him, uh, was not telling them the truth, but she did. And she not only told him that it was bad, but she told him what was so bad about it and how he could fix it. 
And while I was watching this movie, the Lord said, I want you to talk about the gift of honesty. And he said, I want you to talk about what real honesty is. First of all, let's let's talk about what honesty is not. Honesty is not rudeness. Sometimes we are rude to people, we're abrupt with people, we just say things that we say with no accountability, say, I'm just being honest, I'm just being real. No, you're being rude and being hurtful. If the purpose of honesty is not to help somebody or not to shed some light on an issue that you have been through, an issue that you have known about, an issue that you, you know, have yourself experienced, it's not honesty. It's just, um, it's just you just spouting off what you think you know. You know, the backbone of honesty should be always to further truth or to help the person. So we just, we, we have a misnomer in, in our culture saying, Oh, I'm just being real, or I'm just being, uh, I'm just being honest, or I'm just being real, or I'm just keeping 100. But what I, what I've come to understand, sometimes keeping it 100, what we call keeping 100, is just not knowing when to mind our business <laughs> and not knowing when to use the filter or not. Sometimes uh, we need to use a filter, not that we don't need to be honest, but we need to assess the times uh, uh, where we need to be honest or 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 um, not be honest. We're, we always need to be honest, but sometimes our honesty is just giving an opinion that people don't ask for. So what, what I like to do, or what I try to do, is say, is this honesty, or is my keeping it 100 going to hurt? Or going to help. Sometimes, if an opinion is going to um, be an opinion, like if somebody says, "Oh, does this dress make me look fat?" and the person is going to a dinner, and they and they want to look good to. Um, to look good for clients or, or look presentable to clients and the dress doesn't fit them and they're asking you because they really want to know does this dress fit me then you can honestly say um, no, uh, yes or you can honestly say well it doesn't it doesn't fit you. Let's try something else. And you can help the person pick from their closet. But if you're just being honest, saying, like, let's say you're going up to the mall, and it doesn't really matter at that point because they're uh, shopping anyway, whatever. And they say, does this make me look fat? And your honest remark is to, is going to hurt them. It's not helping. It's just it's just hurting them. So is your keeping it one hundred going to be for their benefit, 
or for their detriment. Or, like, we just have to understand um, all, in everything, everything you say has to have a purpose. So, if your honesty, so, one thing about honesty you have to assess is, what is the purpose of this honesty? Is it to help this person, or is it to help myself? Will I, you know, what will this person gain from my honesty? What will I gain from my honesty? And we 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 need to assess if our honesty or if our keeping it 100 is going to hurt or is it going to help? Is it just for you to fly off at the mouth and say your opinions where they're not wanted? Or, or is it for you to just uh, speak on something you have nothing, uh, you have no stake in, you're just flying off at the mouth? And you're saying, I'm just being honest. Who asked you? You're not even the part of that conversation. So I'm not saying we ought not to be honest and say the truth with love and in love. But we also need to assess the purpose of our honesty. This writer, um, going back to the movie, this writer appreciated uh, this person's honesty about the book because it helped him, uh, her critique really helped him become a better writer. And he asked for her help. Um, Nobody likes to be demeaned or nobody likes to be told, I told you so. Nobody likes all that. Um, especially if your opinion is just to give an opinion. Who asked you? Mind your business. But if it is, if it is, to, if it comes from an honest place and to help the person, then then your honesty is warranted. But if it's just to to fly off at the mouth and just put your opinion in where it's not wanted, that's where we have the problem. Because if people don't want your opinion, they won't take it anyway. They won't listen to you anyway. They'll just shut you off. And and your so-called honesty could harm the person. Honesty should be a gift that you give to a person. Uh, should be um, should be a gift that you give to a person. It's not a right. It's a gift. If a person is asking you for their honest opinion, that means they're trusting you with their vulnerabilities and their shortcomings. That's why they're asked and they respect you. They don't want um, a a full-fledged story about why this is what why this is whatever, and they certainly don't want to hear, I told you so. Nobody likes to feel judged. Nobody likes to feel belittled. Nobody likes to feel that, oh, this is so-and-so. And And sometimes uh, you just need to be aware of why am I being honest? Is this to help the person? Or is this going to hurt the person? 
and sometimes with honesty too, delivery is a big thing too. So if you say, we're going back to, uh, do I look, if I, if, if, because I'm a writer, right? I'm, I write books and plays and whatever. And if I, and if I were to go to um, one of my friends and say, they said, um, I said, can you read this Spanish script for me and tell me your opinion? Uh, and they said, Rachel, this is terrible. How could you write something like this? This is awful. I would never, ever talk to that person again about my writing. I would shut down right there. I would, you know, just shut down right there. And even if it's done with the best intentions, um, it needs to come from a place of love. And sometimes, although your intentions may be correct, if it doesn't come from a place of love or if your delivery is wrong, it will shut you, it will shut that person down forever. And you may not know that things have changed. But, um,. But they will we'll have that person may say, "Okay, I'm not never coming to them again." And you may wonder why does that person come to me again? It's because their delivery, your delivery, was off. Because when, when, especially when it comes to a place of vulnerability, a, a vulnerable place is a sacred trust. So when, when somebody is coming to you with a vulnerable thing in their life, saying, you know what, I'm really struggling with this, I'm really just... Um, feeling awful about this, I'm just really feeling, like, bad about this, or I'm struggling financially. The, the thing that they don't need is your judgment. Like, how can you spend your money that way, or how could you do this, or how can you do that? The first thing that they need from you is, uh, First of all, they need your love. They need your understanding. They need the, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that this is happening to you. And remember, I love you and everything's going to be okay. And then you can ask them, well, do you want me to help you? With your financial plan, if they say, no, I just need someone to talk to, then you can just be a listening ear. A lot of times we want to fix things when people just want listening ears. Sometimes we do too much talking and not enough listening to hear what's behind what's going on. Because if someone's coming to you with a vulnerability, like I said before, vulnerability is a sacred trust. It's to be kept in high regard. A person must trust you to be vulnerable with you, to tell you about their the problems with infidelity in their marriage or problems with their finances or problems with their 
um, sexuality or whatever, that is a that is a vulnerable place, and the the fat the gift of honesty that they're giving you needs to be taken with the utmost respect and the utmost regard. That's a gift that they're sharing that with you. That's a gift that they're letting you in. And you need to take it as such. They don't have to tell you anything. So it's a gift that they're telling you. So before you come with your judgment and your, the Bible says this or whatever, come with love. Because oftentimes, people know what they did was wrong. People know what they did was messed up. People know that they're broken. They're not came to be told that they're broken. But they want love. They want someone to put their arms around them and say, you know what, baby, it's okay. It's okay. We'll get through this. And if they need help with the actual situation, then you, then the next question after, um, after you give them love, you say, um, well, um, do you want me to help you with this? And if they say, yes, you can help me. Um, and then you'll say, um, how would you like to, me to help you with this? Um, in the cases of, let's say, um, finances, uh, how do you want me to help you with this? Because there are different ways. Sometimes the person may just be having a bad month and they may not, like, they may not uh, have judged it properly. Sometimes, like, um, it may be a constant thing and they may want you to help them come up with a financial pr plan. But we don't go there first. We we go with love first. And then, then after uh, the love is um, gi given, then we then we can start getting with solutions and with our, you know, whatever. So, but, but first, with honesty, it has to come from a place of, of love. And it, it cannot be about um, the person receiving it. It has to be about the person giving it. So if someone trusts you with their honest, um, honest problem or even honest opinion, um, it's a, it's a sacred trust that needs to be held with that. And if you're the one asking for an honest opinion, and if it's not an opinion that you like, don't come at them critically. Just, like I said before, delivery is everything. So you're the one asking for their honest opinion. And when it's not something you like, you blow up and whatever. And people are afraid to be honest with you because it's like like a it's like a crap storm. Uh, when when they're honest with you, you blow up and start arguing. Do you really want people to be honest, or do you want people to tell you what you want to hear, 
when you ask a person to be honest with you, do you mean you want them to be honest or do you just want to hear what you want to hear and if they don't tell you what you want to hear, you call another person, ask them, you call, they don't tell you, you call around, text around, um, Facebook around, X around, till a person tells you what you want to hear. Asking for honesty is that the key when you're asking for someone to be honest, the key for me is that you need to be prepared that that person may not agree with you. And if they don't agree with you, that's okay. Leave room for disagreement because if you leave room for disagreement, it'll open up um, honesty and vulnerability on another level. But if a person can't uh, respectfully disagree with you or have a different view than you, you'll just stay in your own closed-mindedness. But uh, real honesty done right, done with love, done with respect, done with a person's betterment in mind will, will, will create a new world of uh, vulnerability on both parts. So don't just keep it 100 for the sake of flying off at the mouth. Know when your opinion is warranted and know when it's not. There are too many people online, especially, just giving opinions on things that they have no right to be given opinions on. We don't, like, it's none of our business. Like, Unless the situation has your name on it or affects you directly and you or you have a stake in it, keep your opinion to yourself. Who asked you? Like we just fly off at the mouth on things. We all do it. I've done it. And we've all we've all done it. Especially when it comes to famous people. We give our opinions without knowing the whole story. And not not even famous people, but uh people that are in our lives we just give our opinions when nobody asked for our opinion. And I think we need to learn the art of sometimes just minding our own business. And like I said before, when your opinion, when your honesty is asked for, come from a place of love and understanding first. Uh, Come from a place of, oh, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. And then you will say, would you like my help? Or how, and if they say yes, okay, how would you like me to help you? Because there are different levels of help. Sometimes people just want to talk, like I said before, and sometimes people just want help. But but we haven't, like, uh, mastered the art of just being a listener. We we automatically want to jump in and, and fix things, but sometimes things don't need fixing. Sometimes people just need to talk. 
just need to air it out. Just need to say, here's what I'm going through. And that's all they need. And that's all we need. And they say, often, when people are grieving, they don't need to hear platitudes. They don't need to hear anything. But but I'm here for you. They just need the the greatest gift you can give someone is the gift of your presence. The gift of you just being there. The gift of you just being present. Um, because there are so many times with our, with our phones and with our laptops and with our devices that we're not present with the ones that we love, the ones that are actually in our lives. So we're at the dinner table, but we're texting. We're out with friends, but we're on the phone. You know, we're not really present. And I'm just praying for the Lord to make me as a person more present in my life, more present with my friends, more present with my family, more present with the people that work with me. Because when you're actually present, God can alert you to certain issues in that person's life. God can reveal to you uh, that issue in your child's life. But if you've got your head in your phone all the time or on, or on um, Instagram or Twitter or whatever, you're not really present in your life and you don't really see. And your world, your world is blowing up around you, but you don't see until it's too late. You don't recognize that your husband or wife is mentally pulling away, emotionally pulling away until you notice the affair. Or you don't notice that your child is not doing well, struggling with depression and all of this until uh, the school calls you and says, your child is is get, getting in fights. Then you notice. But I tend to believe that most times there are signs. And if you look up, if you ask the Lord to reveal each person in your life, you'll get to see... Uh, the signs if they're in trouble. Because um, I did a sermon a few few years ago called The Silent Scream. I did it um, I did it taken after the Michael Jackson song Scream. And I talked about how people can be screaming but smiling on the on the outside. And there are so many people, so many people in families right now screaming, but they're smiling on the outside. Or they're bo- they're screaming, but they're boiling in anger. They're screaming, and they're... they're j- they're screaming, but they're going about their daily lives because nobody's present enough to see them. We're all so focused on the day-to-day, but the Lord is asking you, I need you to be present in your life. I need you to be present with your wife. I need you to be present with your friends. I need you to be present with your family. 
and all your family is asking for, or all your friends are asking for, is the gift of your presence. Not only your physical presence, but your emotional presence. Because a lot of times, we could be physically present, like we're there, we're, we're active, we're playing with our kids, but when it comes to our emotional presence, we're MIA. I always say, God, God, when we were talking about sex one time, the Lord and I were talking about sex, and he's like, um, he's like, a man can make love to his wife, and not be present. A woman can make love to her husband and not be present because you're physically there, but emotionally you're somewhere else. Or you're physically there, but but emotionally you're thinking about that uh, famous Hollywood star or whatever, or that hot man on that cover of that book and you're not really present in your own life so the Lord is asking for your presence not only with people not only in your life but he's asking for your presence with him too don't just read the scriptures blindly to say oh I read the scriptures be present in the Word of God while you're reading it. Ask questions. Be engaged while you're reading it. Uh, talk to God while you're reading the scriptures. Often when I'm watching a movie or reading my Bible, I'm talking to the Lord. Often when I'm listening to uh, my pastor preach on Sunday morning online, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing two voices. I'm hearing the pastor's voice, and I'm hearing God's voice. We're we're having a uh, a three way conversation, and the Lord wants you to be pre- present in the relationship with Him, and He's asking for your presence. In your life, your physical presence, and your emotional presence. And he's asking for your spiritual presence. To to engage with him. To tell him what's going on. He's asking for that. And he's asking uh, for the ability to be honest with you. He's asking for permission to be honest with you. And God does not lie, but sometimes when he tries to tell you something, you put walls up, you get stubborn or whatever, and he's asking for you to break down those walls so he can be honest with you. Because God's honesty never hurts. It's never um, designed to hurt or never designed to um, be be um, be uh, never designed to malign you or whatever. It's designed to help you. And he's saying, stop putting up walls when I'm trying to be honest with you. I'm saying this to help you. I'm saying this because I know what you need. I'm not the father of lies and I will never lie to you. Every word that I said is true. Yes, Father, we praise you. We thank you for the gift of honesty. Both the person receiving and the person giving. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, guys.
for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Bye. Take care.